Welcome, everybody, to Progressive Alternative. I'm Victor Monharis. I'm basically helping out, or at least just making another video. This is actually a very special uh, video I'm making uh, today. Uh, basically uploading, doing all that stuff. Right now, it's Saturday night. I'm usually watching uh, Toonami. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, due to basically cancellation of uh, TV services, I won't be getting that for the foreseeable future. So, um, you know, looking into other resources for uh, basically, but uh, mostly I'm just really happy that I can still communicate with a bunch of my uh, friends and uh, that I made around the country on Twitter, mostly Twitter, actually dominantly Twitter. And that's actually what this is about. It's uh, about one of the shows called Black Clover. Black Clover is about that whole, the kid that has the no magic in a world filled with uh, people who do have magic. Hmm, seems kind of like another show that we know about. Now, although, yeah, that My Hero Academia, that came out first, of course. Of course, I guess now in Toonami standards, it's... Black Clover that came first because it actually came first on Toonami than it did with uh, My Hero Academia. I think like several essence is that oh yeah, but of course My Hero Academia came first in Japan, so I guess they would solve more for oh yeah, it's it's Daku, and of course he trended very well today uh, out of uh, Mr. January eleventh. I wonder if that's a Mr. January reference. Hmm. Anyway. So, uh, yeah, but today, this video will be about Black Clover, and it's 100th episode on Toonami. I guess, I think, like, they're on 117th, if, not, if I'm not mistaken, in Japan. So, you know, you know, obviously a lot to catch up with. Yeah, you may notice, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm not a Niners fan. No, not really. I'm uh, more of a Colin Kaepernick, of course, the number seven. Let's turn around. Whoa! First. Yeah, Okay. Fun time over. Yeah, I get a little bit of Simpsons reference. Anyway, so Black Clover. A lot of ladies in there, and that's what this is about. The top 10 best ladies of the show. Now, best means, oh yeah, what does it mean? It's like, oh yeah, does it mean that you just uh, you, you just want to make them very attractive and you just want to sleep with them? It's like, yeah, that's part of it. Uh, I'm thinking like maybe that's like uh, whenever I look at women, it's like, oh yeah, can they do something meaningful? Can they help out? Can they be more than just their looks? And looks do help. Of course, it's not everything. What did they do with it? What did they make an impact with the world about it? And so, uh, yeah, it's basically putting all those factors in. It's like, oh, yeah, most beautiful or most awesome or most everything. It's just like best. So what I mean by that is like, yeah, there's beauty. There's a uh, constellation of actions and actually helping out everyone around them and um, being this one attribution. As you can tell, I'm. Uh, I'm I'm pretty attracted to the ladies, you know. Even though I do support the LGBT community up here, uh, I'm more of just you know I, I'm attracted to women. There's only like, yeah, there's only one man I will ever be attracted to, and uh, unfortunately, it doesn't exist. And uh, it would be that man, that man there. So uh, let's get on with the list. It would be ten because obviously there's only like ten. Uh, uh, or at least a hundred episodes so far on the show. So, and of course, there hasn't been that many ladies out there, except of course, you know, just background characters. But like a lot of women that are just like front and center, doing something, really being attributing to the story. Even though the one of the characters, Finral, who for some reason I seem to uh, fit in more because you know I get. Of course, I would. Uh, understand him a lot more because i just get ah uh, i get rejected by a lot of women and i love teleportation even though i can't do that trick and you know it's just like even when i face disasters like yeah i'm gonna laugh it in the face although of course then i just do i start to run away and basically uh being like uh, avoid it no that's i guess maybe one thing that i want to be way better at so yeah to get started with this list, it would be, uh, the honorable mention uh, would be number 
10, or at least uh, board, uh, the, starting off the list, is uh, one honorable mention would be uh, Marila. Marila. Don't worry, that's uh, not Marie. Otherwise, Gochi would actually uh, hunt me down and just beat the shit out of me like Asta. Although I can take it. I know I could take it, and then just have this freely <laughs> happy face when I'm just getting my ass kicked. My parents do get concerned a lot about me because of that, so... Anyway, uh, yeah, so it was that woman that uh, apparently she was a former assassin, uh, assassin with, trying to punt down one of the leaders that Asta is pretty good friends with, and... Uh, you may have remembered her uh, from that time. It's like, and yeah, she's a pretty badass. Unfortunately, she's not in the story for too long or uh, really doesn't do anything more than just being outside of her story. God, she's very, very goddamn beautiful. And it's like, ooh, I would, I would uh, let her hurt me so much. But no. Nah. Uh, but of course she doesn't do anything much more than just, uh, be in that story of just helping out her, uh, basically she calls her the master, even though that's, uh, she was just like taught from him. And, uh, so yeah, it's basically in that witch forest, she's black hair, has a cape by the way as well. And, uh, that would be my only honorable mention. Every other woman that's probably not going to be on the list. No offense, but I, they probably do mu something much more when the series goes on. But, of course, this is from the series so far that's on Toonami. So, let's enter the official top ten. Let's start with number ten. Uh, that would be Charmy. Now, yeah, it's a good controversial pick, I guess, because I'm saying best women. It doesn't mean that she has to be very beautiful or attractive or, you know, like, have big tits and shit like that. Uh, but, you know, she's pretty inspirational for everyone. And it's like, she eats so much and she uh, really knows how to have a good time. And just having those sheep and uh, basically beating people up. And it's like, she has this one line about, oh, yeah, how she's so sexy and stuff like that. And she's having that rivalry with the girl that I will introduce in the next uh, slot. And she's, uh, and I, you know, it's like I say, yeah, you're pretty. Yeah, and that's, that's pretty good. You know, that's, uh, you, you have to have a ratio between, oh my goodness, all these girls that seem to have huge tits. It's like, you gotta have balance. It's like, if you're gonna have two girls with big tits, you gotta have one girl with, that's petite. Cause you gotta have balance. You wanna let people know that you're relevant. And not everyone in the world, I'm talking to you, One Piece. You, you may seem that I have a problem with that. Uh, basically, the next one would be... Actually, you may have just actually seen her in the book already. Just But you have to look very deeply because she's merging with the colors. That would be Tinker. Or Bell. It would be Bell. Yeah, yeah. Tinker Bell. Oh my goodness. Copyright first, but here comes Disney. Anyway. She's basically this woman that's just, or at least a spirit or a familiar that basically helps out this dude. They they discover uh, each other in that one cave, and she it does actually take a while for her to finally formulate. And I'm guessing like in tonight's 100th episode, I can't see it. Uh, and I'll probably watch it later on Crunchyroll. And just like they just work together and just really have a nice havoc time of just trying to really raid everyone's parade and just she's she's annoying but she is quite adorable in her annoyances and just really admirationally uh well fonded and just uh she's very cute too and it's like it's like at first yeah you get annoyed with her but then it's like yeah, she's like she's still she's still working her way up there at least in terms of tsunami terms. But at least she's uh, quite, quite the exclusive character that I just seen out there. All right, number eight, that would be Gray. Unfortunately, I don't have Gray's picture or I don't have it very fast and steady handily. I mean, I'm probably able to go through all these books. I should have probably prepared better. Uh, but, you know, she's that one girl that apparently is revealed uh, very much later on in the um, Water Tale, um, in that whole castle trip. It's like, yeah, it's like, oh, wow. <laughs> and Finnora actually so, like tells her right then and there, just says it. Oh, yeah, it's like, 
it's like, oh my god, you're actually uh, pretty cute <laughs> when she finally meets her. It's like, ah. Uh, is like yeah i'm just like uh so impressed with her and just how much shyness she has you you, you may see her right there great it's kind of sad that she's kind of just like reverted to this whole shyness character but it does fit because she her uh, power or at least her spells is basically um just basically transforming into somebody else in order to basically blend in or cause confusion or any of that sort and she has so much fun with her teammates and really uh has a very fun time with them all yeah, it's just, uh, I, I guess, you know, I, I find that, I find it, people also find it that she's quite important to them. Especially when they have that one, like, basically about three episodes when they take on three members of the Midnight Sun. Um, that, I guess, they labeled them as a terrorist group. They were more like a rascal group. Until, basically, uh, everyone basically turns into elves. And that whole aspect, spoiler alert, if you're already down to this. But, again, I'm making this because of, uh, if anybody's watching it, uh, who's been watching the Toonami run. So, and just, uh, Grey, just so fantastic character number uh, seven would be Kahano now technically I really don't have her around here although again I have to look through this book and oh yeah there's so many pages how are you not able to find her oh oh wait here she is oh what luck and let's not make this any more awkward Kahano you know the the woman that basically helps out Asta and uh, Noel find their basically their stride in the whole underwater arc and just really find themselves really intensely well uh pushing themselves past the limits and um oh yeah just lovely beauty i understand why her brother's trying to like uh you know of course he's more focused on herself i don't know why and it's like oh yeah i'm working and it's like this whole collado of the quadruple date double date actually yeah it's like oh, i'm trying to get them together no you're trying to get me with them it's like and she can sing and of course she can sing uh, i'm not too sure what happened between the singing parts of the english and the uh japanese version it's like oh yeah is she singing the english part or is she singing the uh japanese part uh is both the voice actresses who are doing that so but still very well lovely and she does make a difference lovely difference especially for people especially on the episode that i thought we originally thought was the finale at least uh, for the short-term run that um it was originally supposed to be like 51 episodes originally for black clover but then of course oh yeah we're very popular let's keep going and uh very very proud of that and just so immensely uh well done and um looking forward to so much more will we get to see her again hopefully maybe be a lot more than what she is that one scene where they're basically just in the festival was just it was pretty heartwarming when she basically got her voice back because you know she was basically uh beat down horribly by beto the giant uh force of nature there that was part of the midnight sun terrorist group and so uh yeah number six let's segues ha <laughs> not my best thing uh mimosa number six that would be this girl right over here oh god it's like oh sweet jesus christ that end the one of the ending sequence i think it was like a couple back in the tsunami run it's like yeah she's just dancing in that river or at least i guess she's like on top of the water and somehow she's able to <laughs> dance like jesus and uh yeah she's able to just be very encouraging to her teammates she gets to be very uh helpful and just like really be encouraging i think just really you have to give it a lot that oh yeah she's in a dominant group so that's why she's she seems to be so dominant but you know she's a healer and she actually helps out and you get to see much of that growth in, in that tournament arc where uh, she's helping out asta and the Xerxes guy with the mask on and so uh yeah just 
I really love her. God, just the orange hair is like, and of course the last episode they left all off on on this time and date is like, you just like, oh, don't you dare put her on that crest. Don't you dare do that to me. Don't you do that. Don't you dare molest her, you goddamn elves. I again, I may have a problem with that. Uh, gotta get it checked it out. Still trying to. Number five, Soul. No, don't worry. Uh, these other two ladies are going to be later in the list. Soul. That would be closer look. Yeah. Uh, as you may tell, or maybe you might have figured out by now that uh, I have a thing. I have mostly a thing for black women. I, I love black. I mean, uh, I love women who are so much determined, just so feisty and so eloquently well and just determined and strong and action can age beautifully as well as the, as time goes on uh, especially one of my friends um and she lives in michigan and i i really love her so much and she's african-american of course i don't know what soul her name is soul it's like s-o-l it's like that's a spanish name and so yeah she's uh, apparently like a, from a village girl and you would have thought she was amazonian and apparently they kept they keep calling her that even though we see in her flashbacks during the tournament arc that she's actually uh, she was from a city or she was in a rural part of the city, um, and just uh, but yeah she's just very fantastically fierce, strong, determined. She's so obsessed with her captain uh, Charlotte, and it's like yeah she calls her sis. I think she calls her something differently in the Japanese version um, and but of course the captain keeps telling her like oh yeah call me captain she keeps she keeps doing it obviously I, I love her for that because yeah stand your own ground make her love you <laughs> we all thought she was gonna kiss. we all thought the first line is like the only one that could tie me down in my is my captain it's like ooh, we know what you're thinking we know what you're thinking mm, I, I mean I, I'm thinking it too by the way thinking it too is that a bad thing i'm thinking that uh, i'm thinking 50 shades of gray god damn it god damn it i'm thinking 50 shades of gray although i would say 50 shades of soul mm. i would i want that god damn it i want it now uh number four would be noel not not the huge fairy guy so it's just, just ignore him and so yeah noel she finally becomes her own uh, later on apparently i have one of the other covers which basically shows her in her ultimate form like the latest one for the united states and i'm not going to show that one i'm not going to play a little spoiler for my toonami followers but you can probably already guess if you're uh, watching the japanese really following the japanese i haven't been doing that but i see a lot of reviews and uh praises for it but uh yeah she's very uh, you know, she starts off as a tonsure, like a royal, and we, we don't love her for that. It's like, yeah, it's like we already have enough rich people here just really mocking all the riches in front of us faces. And so, uh, yeah, we don't like her for that. And then, of course, it turns out, yeah, there's a problem with her. She She's wrong with her act. Something's wrong with her accuracy. She's shamed from her family. She still is, even though she he continues to improve her family parents just or her siblings just want her to be perfect and she goes along and does this magical trick of this water seahorse layer dragon and i'm just very happy with that and i'm also thinking of asterisk war whenever it happens is like the the ending song for both of them by the way uh, but mostly the first one of uh, of uh, i'm waiting for the rain it's called and that's what i always think of when she ever does that very powerful sea layer dragon move and noel just really personifies herself quite a beauty so many people uh I, for me maybe it's just me that i thought she was petite but oh yeah she actually has some nice little bounce sorry what I, of course i was gonna work that in I'm, 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 I'm not again i'm not the best person to do this uh, or at least, basically, you know, um, I'm not the best man in the world, I guess. And so, you know, it's like, I'm a man. Or I'm a dude. I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm kitty too. I'm a dude. I had to work that in somehow or just be random with it. Uh, but yeah, she's 
uh, you know, being a royal, actually using some of her influence to actually get some stuff in there. And even though she's kind of mocked and she still gets along great with everyone else, even though she still keeps up with that tons of Ray, uh, look. And then, of course, uh, as she's trying to confess her love to Asta, which will we ever know if they're going to fall in love with each other or not? I'm not so sure. I'm looking forward to it, even though the um, the American voice actors for those for Noel and Asta are married, and this, that's just fantastic. It's like, oh, I, I bet their Facebook messages or whatever social media was just blowing up with those references. Number three, that would be Vanessa. Vanessa was quite an intriguing character to the extent that. Oh, yeah, she's a drunk. And the first time I saw her, you know, it's just like, oh, yeah, she's just going to be there for fan service, fan service, fan service, fan service. Here comes the One Piece. Oh, God, here comes the fan service. Then we learn more about her story. And then we learn that she was in the cage. Oh, look, it's Asta, uh, Asana fans. And everyone that hates on that, you know what you could do to yourselves. So. Uh, yeah, Vanessa just just fantastic abilities of, and she has a kitty, she has a cat on her, and it's like I love cats, by the way. I don't have any inside. I don't have my own, unfortunately. Uh, but hopefully, when I adopt one, maybe in the near future, uh, I'll be able to have one inside here. And uh, but yeah, Vanessa just able to alter the uh, real, sometimes basically the realities that they're in, and you know basically uh, twist fate in I guess in that essence that they were trying to reveal herself. And but she still does the threads like the making Asta look like Spider Man, or at least just leap and dodge around like Spider Man. Maybe more like. Um, I'm thinking only Spider-Man, but I know there's more characters like maybe the Beast Boy and more the whole other characters that can dodge. Hey, look, I can dodge. Everyone can dodge. It's just how good can you be at dodging? And so, uh, yeah, I'm just like really impressed with just Vanessa and just her becoming more... Uh, more than just fan service, more than just uh, doing this, uh, you know, just being drunk and just having a good time. Who she adelopes a rivalry with. Next one on number two, Charlotte. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me personally, she's like lower on the list. But of course, talking again about best, trying to be subjective here. Again, I'm not the best at being subjective, but somehow uh, that doesn't stop me from trying. So number two with uh, Charlotte is that she has these abilities to uh, basically have flowers, defeat enemies, be a thorn. She lets that curse get the best of her whenever when she was younger. And then, of course, Captain Yami helps her out and just like uh, it tells her that I love women that are strong and that can hold their own. I love that too. Of course, uh, obviously, as you can tell, which of my sort, uh, my picks is, uh, I would really have. Um, that's something that um, you know definitely grows the future and definitely do something with it. And Charlotte uh, really it personifies the beauty. And the, there were so many episodes when she's ever in it, and it's like it, it, she's like a step up from every other woman that's just so afraid of her looks getting in the way. No, you know she actually uses her looks and actually bashes everybody out around, everywhere around. So it's just uh, fantastic just to see her just doing that and just laying it all on the line there. And basically teaching soul too. So future prodigy. But number one, number one has to be basically what Amy Kobashar is. She even had the one thing from the Stephen Colbert show. Number one, her own cover, Mariola. Marioli, my goodness, she can actually take on basically the strongest elves ever, which apparently the elves are supposed to be the strongest of the group, um, at least as of currently right now, as they're currently running on Toonami. And just the power in there, the, the physicality, her inspiration, even though she's rough on everybody else, then she sells them down and tells them how uh, that I just want the best out of you and just really making sure that she plays a part in basically everybody's lives. Noelle, Charlotte, Souls, everybody else. And just, oh gosh, she's actually quite a beauty too. Whew, sweetness, I would, yeah, but I would, you would too. 
So, yeah, that's my top 10 best ladies of Black Clover. This has been Progressive Alternative. I'm Victor Monjaras. You have a very fantastic night. Let's keep on loving that every every day and every moment, every night, baby. Yeah. Nailed it.